Okay guys, so I am back with another video. This video, my fiance and I went and visited the Tupac Exhibit Museum in Los Angeles. I'd waited a while to visit, so we finally got around to visiting and it was it exceeded <laughs> like, my free the... expectation I've ever, like I could have had for this museum was like oh, exceeded. I oh, no. And I learned so much. Thank you. Hello, just so y'all know you can hang in here as long as you wish. I'm in and out and talk here and there, but this is just the waiting area that we all kind of chilled in. Um, we were educated on a few things, like how Thug Life started, what each of its tattoos meant. It was super cool just to see like all the small details that they paid attention to um, when it came to Tupac. So here I'm just showing what Nefertiti meant and where it was placed on him tattoo-wise. These are all his tattoos. And there's little um, pieces of paper that read like what each one means, why he got it, things like that. So I found that to be really, really cool, like a tattoo breakdown. So 50 niggas, 50 niggas turned into. So they gave us these headphones and this remote, and that's pretty much how we were interacting with the museum. Ah, oh, this part was super exciting. We walked into this huge room where we watched a movie, and. Um, it kind of just gave the history of, well, I don't want to really tell, but I do want to let you know that I cried. I should have cried big crocodile tears because it was so sad. So sad. So here we're pretty much being educated on the earlier stages of his life. I learned that uh, Tupac's family was heavily affiliated with the Black Panthers. He had aunts that were very, very well known. Um, I didn't even know that he came from a family that just was as well like educated as they are. And there's no way for me to really tell in this YouTube video. Like Tupac was extremely knowledgeable. He was raised to be extremely smart by his mom, his aunts, and his family. These are just pictures that he drew when he was a child the museum I have no idea how but they were able to get a whole bunch of his drawings from when he was a kid high schooler they pretty much got everything I tried to insert some of um, which everything everywhere was great but I tried to insert some of my favorite like readings from the trip lots of words of wisdom was given like just throughout the entire museum so I kind of tried to slow it down so that you guys can pause and read. Yeah, this area I really liked because it just went into great detail about how much uh, Tupac and his family really liked literature. They took reading um, very seriously and furthering their education and overall knowledge very seriously. So that was really cool to see, seeing as though the media had cut Tupac out, you know, I was born in 93, so the media cut Tupac out to be just this, like, thug. <laughs> and I didn't know how the media worked then, but this museum really showed me how wise he was and how he had a lot of wise people around him feeding him just knowledge. So it was really cool to see that. Here are a few of his notebooks. Like, they had his real notebooks that he wrote his songs and his raps and, like, it was such a surreal experience because I feel like we got to really know him. Um, and I feel like that was kind of the point of the exhibit for us to like really get to know him. And I didn't know what to expect because it was like 30, it was close to $40 to even get into the exhibit. So I've never paid that much for a museum and I, I'm an avid museum goer. Um, but this was totally worth it because we got to see so many personable things that like it was worth paying to see. So this is just 
more of his composition notebooks. It was cool to see his handwriting. It was cool to see just like how his thought process was. I'm a creative, so seeing how another creative's thought process works always interests me. They showed things digitally, um, but they also showed, and I'm gonna show it after this, the actual notebooks, so I thought that was really cool. The whole exhibit was cool. Whoever thought of it needs a raise. Yep, some more of his writings. I want to just go a little bit slow so you guys can see it. Actually showed us his art with his handwriting. I thought all of this is cooler and we said like a million times because it was all super surreal, but it was really cool just to see the dates at the top, um, to see how he writes, to see what he writes about. So I thought that was really cool. I'm gonna let you guys enjoy that in slow motion for a second. Okay, so I'm back because this part was super cool to me because I'm from the Bay, so seeing him write Oakland was dead-ass cool. Like, I like simple shit like that. <laughs> so seeing him write Oakland and LA was cool. These are the actual notebooks I was talking about before they had them on the big screen. Now they're showing you, like, the actual notebooks that he wrote in. This room really made me emotional because it was, like, his potential room. Tupac was just getting into so much, and he was doing so much, even though the law felt like it seems like the world was against him but he kind of kept going kind of he kept going so that room just kind of shows his journey him getting into the entertainment industry i put a video in here about that showed a lot of his outfits that he wore in a few of the movies he was in it's a character <laughs> saw Juice, I would call up Tupac and I was like, I want to do a movie with you. And he's like, what? You know, Tupac and I are only two years apart. And I was like, yeah, I think we could do some good work together. He's like, yeah, man, so we met up. You want to do a movie with me? He said, yeah. I said, you want to do a movie with Jan Jackson? He said, hell yeah. What do you want from me? Start with your phone number. I'm probably the only dumb person in Tupac's life to ever tell him, you're not that good of a rapper. You, know, you should just act. Forget that rap stuff. You must ain't got no man because you don't never smile. The actor said music is my life. I got to do my mama's my life. But he was a natural actor. And people don't ever really understand that he studied acting in high school. And he did plays in Shakespeare in high school. Oh, 
recreated um, the studio set like the studio he recorded in they're really good at recreating sets and also showing pictures of what the sets were I don't know how they like did they get the whole set or did they really rebuild it I have no idea if the sets were saved I have no idea um, but I thought it was really cool like here they're showing the studio I just showed you the studio that was the studio we just saw now they're showing him shooting so I thought it was cool a whole bunch of his original CDs it was all just wild, like, just wild. Everything was original. I'll let you guys kind of look. That slow-mo coming up here.
So this part was my favorite part because it showed literally every major outfit that I have seen Tupac wear, whether that be in a movie, a music video, a song. They had every single outfit in this area. Very thorough descriptions on where he wore them to, like what the event was. They had the outfit, the picture of him at the event in the back, and then they had, I mean, everything down to the accessories they still had. Um, so I'm just going to let you guys enjoy seeing all his outfits. The guy could dress. <laughs> I tried to do slow-mo for some of them. I'm really into fashion, so seeing um, his versatility in the way he dressed was super cool. It interests me. Like, I wonder how he would dress if he was still alive today, you know? Okay, so this part had me a little choked up. Um, it was the list of all of the belongings that he had with him when he was murdered. So we got to see all that. It's everything that was in his possession. And um, yeah, it was just really intense and surreal to see like the actual paper in person, like the actual products, like they were there in the casing. It was intense. All right, this is going to be my last little recording, but all in all, I learned a lot about Tupac. I really learned that the media slandered his name, made him seem like he was a thug, but he was extremely intelligent, came from a very, very strong group of black people, black women. Um, 
there's really not, I don't want to give too much because I feel like everybody, especially black people, should do their research on him. Because he paved the way in a lot of ways. And he predicted what we're dealing with now. So it's an amazing museum. I give it a 100 out of 10. Everybody needs to visit. Thanks for watching.